Alexa here from the blog, theduvalhomsa.com. Today I'm joined with my mom, Leslie, from Lemon Grove Lane. She has a blog and a YouTube channel and a beautiful Instagram account. And she has never made beeswax candles before, is that right? That's right. I'm gonna show her how we have been doing it at our house this year. Beeswax candles make such great homemade Christmas gifts and they are a really natural and healthy alternative to burning store-bought candles. So you can just buy beeswax from the store, create your own candles, and you don't even need to add any scents or any fragrances. You can just burn the beeswax by itself. It smells like honey. It smells really good. And there are some really natural beneficial properties to burning beeswax in your house. It helps get rid of like some of the dust or allergens that are in the air. Similar to taking honey, for example, in your tea, it's just really good for your immune system and your overall health. So the beeswax is kind of a nice way to freshen up your air. So I didn't know that. I didn't know that you were actually purifying the air with that. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to be making beeswax candles in whatever jars I have available. So I have mason jars, I have little spice jars, and what's nice about doing kind of a small candle as opposed to a really large one is you can do more and just change up the scents and you can give them as gifts too. You will need beeswax. Now the beeswax I'm using today is this Sky Organics white beeswax. You can also get more of a yellow beeswax. And you will also need essential oils if you want to scent your candles. You can also add things to your candles like I have some shaved orange here. We also have some cinnamon sticks and a couple of different essential oils. And I like to burn a Christmas scents or holiday scents all winter long because mm -hmm. even after Christmas, I still like clove and the ginger and the pine smells. Right, the winter smells, yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. because kind of cozy and warming spices and that sort of thing. Yeah, okay, so you're gonna go ahead and just pour the beeswax pellets into the jar and fill it up all the way. We're just gonna add some extra beeswax all the way to the top. Yep. Okay. So when the beeswax melts, it gets really low because it becomes really liquidy. So we may have to top this off later. We're going to put this in the oven at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So it doesn't need to be in water or anything, just straight on the no. glass? No. Okay. So that's one way. That's kind of the oven method. Mm -hmm. Now another way you could do that is by using a double broiler, which basically is melting the beeswax in a container in water. So I have here a little jar that we don't use. It's like a creamer that we don't use for food. And I have beeswax in here that's melting right now. So this is easily pourable so I can pour it into, maybe we'll use this for the spice okay. jars. Sounds good. So I just have about a few inches of water in here and it's just a basically homemade double broiler. All right, so we're gonna put this in the oven. The oven takes about an hour for the beeswax to melt. Okay, so we have here for demonstration purposes, we just put the mason jar in the oven and it needs to melt. Okay. So I melted these before we started the video so that I could show you what it was, what the next step is. So you're gonna wanna have something to stir your fragrances in if you're going to use fragrances. So you don't wanna use a metal knife or spoon because you're gonna have wax all over your silverware. So I like to use barbecue skewers. It's a good That's idea. what this is called, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Anything wooden or a plastic knife. When you pull the beeswax out of the oven or the stove, you only have a little bit of time before it starts to harden, so you do wanna work quickly. I have a few different scent ideas that I want to make these candles out of, so let me know what you think. Okay. The first one is called, I call it Christmas tree, and that one is going to have black spruce essential oil, Douglas fir essential oil, and cedar wood. Okay. So it will smell very woodsy and Christmassy. Yeah. yeah. I haven't tried black spruce before, that sounds nice. What does that smell like? Yeah. Is it whimsy? Yeah. Actually, um, that complements the honey smell that yeah. you have, the natural honey smell in the beeswax. Yeah. yeah. It's all just very natural smelling, which is why I like yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and then the other scent combination that I really like for these candles is, um, I just call it ginger red house, is ginger, clove, and orange. I'm actually going to use something called Litzia today, but it's very similar to orange essential oil if you have it. And then in that one, we can put in our shaved oranges and mm -hmm. some cloves okay. if we want. You can either get wicks that have a little metal base on them that you can glue to the bottom of your candle, but that's not the method we're gonna use today. We're going to just use this, um, I have this whole thing of wick right here. This is a one solid ball of wick, and it's a hemp wick, so it's organic very natural, and so I cut a few pieces off here. So what we're gonna do is we need to just straighten the wick out as much as we can, and we're gonna stick it right in the middle of the candle, and we're going to tie it to a barbecue skewer, and that's how the candle will dry. 
So why are you not going to use the ones that, if you, so if I were to get the other wick, the mm -hmm. one that you, you glue to the bottom, then do you put that in first, then pour the wax on top? Is that how it works? Yes. Okay, right. All right. Yep. So, and so either one works. And this method is just easier because, why did you choose this one over the other? Um, actually, I chose it because the wick was a lot cheaper. I got this whole ball of wicks as opposed to buying okay. individual wicks, wicks with metal pieces. So it's a lot more economical. It was you're just making cheaper. a lot of these to, to go with the um, yeah. just the, the ball of wicks. But if you okay. find it difficult to use this method, you might want to just pay a little bit more. Um, but I'm going to show you my trick for getting that wick nice and straight. Okay. Okay, so we have two candles here. So we've got this little mason jar and then we have this mug. I think this is the cutest gift idea. Oh, absolutely. Can you imagine? So darling. Someone opening up a mug and then there's a wick inside. And the then you can repurpose it, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Let's do a Christmas tree. Okay, so that would be the cedarwood and the Douglas fir and black spruce. So here's the complicated part for me. I always forget how many drops of each essential oil to add okay. to. So for product. candles, you want to add quite a bit. So I'm actually going to add 10 of each, so 30 total. Wow, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's going to smell really good in here mm -hmm. in a second. So you can go ahead and add that now to this okay. one. 10, 10, and 10. Mm -hmm. The cedarwood, okay, so cedarwood, I know, some that's, a, that's a good hard. topic because some cedarwood is very thick. And I have noticed that some of the essential oils are really difficult to get yeah. out of the containers. Do you have any <laughs> um, so ideas on how to... Uh... I just take the top off. So cedarwood ah. is just really a really thick oil. So I take the top off right. and... So is Lang Lang. Yeah. I'm going to just pour um, what I think would be about 10 drops. Ah. All right. Yeah. It's one way of doing it. Yeah. Because otherwise you're going to be shaking it for a You know, maybe a that time. might be a quarter of an eighth of a teaspoon probably, right? Maybe. Okay. Those ones should be easier. Yeah, hopefully. Okay, there's 10 there. Okay. Okay, oh, doesn't that smell good? Oh, I can already <laughs> smell it. It smells so fresh and clean. Okay, so you want to take you either, like um, farm. yeah, it's, take one of those wooden skewers okay. and just go to stir. All right. So basically, you're going to just put the wick right in the center mm -hmm. and you're going to tie it to the skewer. Okay. So I'm going to measure approximately what I think that will look like. Wrap it around the skewer to secure it. And we might adjust just once it's in the candle. And try to get the wick as straight as possible. And you just go right in the middle, like this. Now you just will adjust it to make it fit. And then I'm gonna take another skewer and move the wick where I want it. I think once you do this once or twice, you get pretty good at it. Just a little bit of practice. All right, so then we're just gonna let that dry. So this will take about 24 hours to dry completely before you burn it. So you want to just let that sit for a day. Mm -hmm. So for this one, we'll do the gingerbread house. And this one is going to be clove, ginger, and orange. I'm using Litzia, which is similar to orange, um, but you can use whatever orange oil you have, clove and ginger. Now for this, I think it'll be really fun to add some cloves and shaved oranges. Ooh, that sounds so it's you want to add really pretty too. So yeah. how much? Just a sprinkling of each, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna stir this up. And you just want to add the wick kind of right in the middle of all the stuff. You can kind of use it to to prop it up if you want. Support, yeah. Yeah. gonna let that sit. Now once these are done for 24 hours, you'll just cut the wick right at the top there and you can start burning it. So what's nice about the double broiler method that we have going here is that it's so easy to pick this up and pour. I'm going to use a little napkin because I think it'll be hot. But this is our melted beeswax that I melted over the double broiler. So we can actually just pour this wax into these little spice jars and make little mini candles. Does that sound good? I think that sounds great. There you go. Okay, so these are the four candles we just made and we're gonna let these sit for about 24 hours and then we'll cut the wicks and we can burn them or give them as gifts. 
so pretty. Yeah, this looks like a cup of coffee. <laughs> I'm, I, it's crazy how quickly they sit, really. Yeah. We did it. Yay! <laughs> We are going to let these dry for 24 hours and then we're going to have some beautiful Christmas tree scents and gingerbread house scents and I just love all those smells for Christmas. Super easy project. You could even have your um, older child help you with this. It's not a toddler activity for sure, but um, yeah. <laughs> a, someone, a child in grade school could help with this and I think it would be a great activity. So. A wonderful gift idea and good for your home. Thank you so much for watching this video and making candles with us. I will leave all of the links for the materials we're using for these candles in the blog post at thedevelhomestead.com and I'll leave the link below this video too. I'll also leave a link to my mom Leslie from Lemon Grove Lane and her channel. You can go check her out. If you are brand new to my page, make sure you subscribe on YouTube and like on Facebook. Every week I post new farm to table recipes and homemade natural living from our homestead here in Duval. Thank you so much for stopping by the Duval homestead. <coughs> this is how I film. I just kind of like take breaks. I'm gonna think about what I'm gonna say. Okay, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> Beeswax candles. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I had to look at the gas. I'm starting to laugh. Because... <laughs> Hi. You know your mom's filming? Okay. Yeah, this is how it is. Okay. Hope nothing breaks. They're gonna go for the plates. She's going for her tail. I know, I see that. <laughs> the plates are gonna be